My name is John Dominguez. I'm an applications engineer here at Mori Microwave. And today I'd like to introduce you to our MT1000 and MT2000 system. Large signal analysis of a microwave and RF device is an essential part of device characterization and performance measurements. Automated mechanical tuners and VNA supported measurement systems are widely used in many applications. However, these typical load pull measurement setups using physical tuners do have some limitations such as limited impedance tuning capabilities, complex measurement setups, narrow bandwidth signal analysis, and slower measurements. Mori Microwave's Mixed Signal Active Load Pool System is a revolutionary characterization solution for cutting edge semiconductor technologies and RF devices, providing rapid measurements, advanced wideband analysis, and reliable operation. In this video, I will introduce our Mixed Signal Active Load Pool Systems, the MT1000 and MT2000 systems. Before diving into the technical details of the MT1000 and MT2000 systems, let's go over some of the basics of active load pool concepts. In a tuner-based load pool setup, the load impedance is set by the tuner as a physical component. The tuner's carriage and probes move to the correct physical positions to provide the required load impedance. The load reflection coefficient is defined as A2 over B2, where B2 is a signal produced by the dud, and A2 is a reflected signal from the load, in this case the tuner. Now, let's suppose we can generate the A2 signal artificially using a phase and amplitude controlled signal synthesizer. In that case, we can maintain the load reflection coefficient and load impedance electronically. This process is called active load pool. Mori's mixed signal active load pool system uses this same technique with improved practical and theoretical implementations to achieve ultra fast and reliable active load pool measurement performances while additional features essential for modern characterization requirements. The MT2000 is a pure active source and load pool system using refined tuned signals to control the source and load impedances. Its unique advanced and patent protected structure allows controlling of multiple impedances at the fundamental and harmonic frequencies concurrently. The system has complete control of signal processing with advanced wideband receivers enabling ultra-fast and wideband analysis. It's an independent, compact and automated system utilizing signal synthesizers, RF signal processing hardware, receivers and digital signal processing units making this a powerful single box solution. The tailored software and hardware of the MT2000 can be called a compact measurement laboratory. In addition to source and load pool measurements, it can measure CW and pulse S parameters, as well as perform pulse DC IV measurements. Its oscilloscope tool can analyze the voltage and current values at the input and output of the DUD in time domain. The system's capabilities allows for vast array of measurement parameters. In addition to single tone load pull measurements, one of the unique features of the MT2000 is to be able to perform measurements with modulated signals, including two-tone analysis. MT2000 can generate the modulated signals without the need for an external signal generator. With up to one gigahertz of signal bandwidth, it's possible to measure critical modulated signal parameters such as IMD, EVM, ACPR, and PAR while performing source and load pull measurements. Let's take a look at the system configuration for our setup. Here, we'll be using a single source amplifier for our fundamental loop, followed by three amplifiers for each of our load loops. I'll need to configure the appropriate frequency range for each of my fundamental, second, and third harmonic loops. For this demo, I'll be performing a measurement at 3 GHz up to the third harmonic, so I'll be setting my second harmonic to 5.8 GHz to 6.2 GHz, and my third harmonic from 8.7 to 9.3 gigahertz. Once complete, we'll continue to the active load characterization for the system. Here, we'll go through a guided calibration setup needed to complete this section. The checklist helps validate that our physical setup is properly configured. Once verified, we can then begin the characterization for each of our loops for the fundamental, second, and third harmonic. In this step, the system will verify power from external amplifiers and associated gain within the frequency range we previously specified.
Once complete, we can go ahead, apply, and save this characterization. Next, let's proceed to the measurement setup. We will prepare the system for a single tone measurement and for harmonic control. I will be enabling the single tone load pool option with the appropriate fundamental frequency range, in this case 2.9 GHz to 3.1 GHz with the 100 MHz step size. Then I'll define the number of harmonics to measure. Now, we move on to the calibration of our system at the DUT reference plane. Here, we have our calibration frequencies already set up as well as our calibration parameters. Then, depending on our device power, we want to make sure that our input and output attenuation levels are properly adjusted so as not to compress or damage our system. From here, we can select our calibration type and kit for SOLT, and then proceed to our calibration. This will define our reference planes for the input and output networks, similar to the S-parameter calibration we use for network analyzers. Since I'm using a connectorized DUT, I'll be using the Mori 8050 3.5mm Cal Kit. As I connect my standards, I can also monitor the raw measurements to the right of the screen. After completing the calibration, we can quickly verify the quality of the Cal. In this case, we take a look at the through and expect our S21 value to be close to 0 dB across the frequency range. We can also cycle through individual frequencies for fundamental and harmonics in order to individually validate each. We then apply the calibration. Next, we move on to the power calibration of our system. Here, we can zero out and calibrate our power sensor using the MT2000 software. Now, we can go ahead and connect our power sensor for the power calibration. Here, we will be calibrating the power for fundamental and harmonic frequencies. Once completed, we can verify the quality of the power cal. Let's go ahead and apply the calibration. Now that we've performed our S parameter and power calibrations, we can perform a source power cal for improved control of our source power. The system will be set on a through and measures power at the input port reference plane, then applies a correction based on our S parameter and power calibrations for a more accurate source control. Next, we move on to the calibration optimization. This tool compares the error gain on a through against the power gain theoretical value of zero. The system then optimizes the error terms to be closer to this value and applies it to the calibration. We can set our source power as well as radius and averaging for this cal. We can see impedances being set simultaneously by the system for the calibrated frequencies.
The viewer at the bottom gives us a visualization of what the correction looked like for each frequency. Now that we've fully calibrated our system, let's verify the quality of our calibration. Here, we can set the measurement conditions for the through verification at the fundamental. We'll perform a real-time measurement at 3 GHz in which multiple impedance points will be run simultaneously. We select a large radius with high gamma to try and capture the error for various impedances. Next, we'll want to select a power sweep to run for each impedance. Here, we'll set a sweep from 30 to 35 dBm at 1 dB steps. Let's begin the measurement. As we run the measurement, we can see the MT2000 speed in action as multiple impedances are run simultaneously for each power level. As we finish the measurement, we can now plot those results. Here, we're looking for a power gain close to 0 dB. With 0 0.05 dB at 0.8 gamma, we've got a great cal. Now that we've verified our calibration, let's run a device measurement. We'll be using a 10 watt GAN hemp at 3 GHz. We'll be running another real time measurement and specifying our fundamental frequency. We can set our pulse conditions and select a targeted fundamental impedance sweep for our device. We've also loaded appropriate fixture files in order to de-embed up to our device reference plane. To the right, we can specify our bias conditions. Now, we begin the measurement. We simultaneously sweep 20 impedances for 19 power conditions, resulting in 380 measurements. These are real-time measurements, not fast-forwarded, giving us a look at the amazing speed of the MT2000 Mixed Signal Active Load Pulse System. For each power step, the impedances will converge once again within the user-defined tolerances. If we were to use typical mechanical tuners, we would instead see each impedance performed one at a time for each power condition, increasing the overall time of completion. Longer measurement times can introduce unwanted effects in your device performance, such as thermal effects. And with that, in just about 30 seconds, 380 measurements are complete. Using the data display, we can view Cartesian and contour plots as well as define our dependency variables. Here, I've set my dependency variable to available input power. I can then slide the bar to view the measurement data at different instances of power. The data display is an independent software used to analyze measurement data. We can also select measurement data or impedances from the plots to see their relationships. The viewer colorization is a great way to visualize independent measurements against groups of data. Let's select an optimum fundamental impedance from the plot based on power and efficiency. Now that we've identified the optimum region, we can rerun the measurements with these new conditions. This time, will fix the fundamental load impedance at the optimum. Then, define our second harmonic impedance sweep. We'll be setting a phase sweep at high gamma. We can easily change the impedance pattern using different pattern types or user-defined ones.
We can view our fundamental frequency displayed in blue as well as our second harmonic impedances in orange. Now we'll rerun the measurement with these new conditions. We'll see the impedances will now converge for both the fundamental and second harmonic impedances that were defined. Let's take a look at the data and see how our measurements have changed after sweeping impedances at the second harmonic. We'll first change our dependency variable to reflect measurement data at higher input power where the device is further into compression. In the termination window, we can quickly toggle between fundamental and second harmonic impedances. Now, we'll go ahead and select the measurement that provided the best efficiency to see the associated impedance at the second harmonic. We can see our selected measurement shown in teal. Let's rerun the measurement for third harmonic control. Our fundamental impedance remains fixed as before. Then, instead of a phase sweep at the second harmonic, we copy over our fixed second harmonic impedance. For the third harmonic, we perform a phase sweep just like we did for the second harmonic in the previous measurement. It seems that our third harmonic sweep is covering the view of our second harmonic. Let's make a quick adjustment for better visibility. Now we can get a clear view of each of our harmonic conditions. Let's start the measurement. We can now take a look at our new measurement data and see what kind of improvements have been made. Using the data viewer, we can easily view the improvement in our device as well as compare it against previous data sets with easy to see color schemes. Here, I've stacked all three measurements for comparison. Using another plot I've set up, I can also monitor the gamma in of my device. We can also change the viewer using predefined or custom functions to easily view data, such as power at the third harmonic. By selecting individual measurements, we can easily view the associated impedance. The viewer tool easily allows us to set up plots for all measurement parameters. Let's set up another plot to view our current for different load impedances across our datasets. We can easily toggle back and forth between measurements as well as overlap multiple datasets. This allows us to easily compare results against different conditions to understand our device behavior.
I can also access the scope view to look at the captured current giving me the functionality of an oscilloscope. We can view current measurements at different load impedances as well as cycle through each input power condition. Using the dotted blue and red lines here, we can also define our measurement window. In short, Mori's MT2000 Active Load Pool System is a powerful compact system capable of providing incredibly fast and reliable measurements with load pool sweeps of up to 1000 impedance and power states per minute for fundamental and harmonic frequencies. With capabilities for performing modulated measurements, this system is an ideal turnkey solution. For more information about our characterization solutions, please visit us at moriMW.com or contact your local field engineer. Thanks for watching.